So once you've completed the 3D scans and you've moved on to the export section, you have two options. You can either export directly to mesh, which is an, usually an STL file or maybe it's an OBJ file if you've scanned with color, or you can export your mesh to peel.cad. By clicking on peel.cad, which we're going to do, it will launch you straight into the CAD module that's a part of the peel.os software. So now I'm going to show you how to extract the information from uh, the scan data so that you can live transfer it to either SolidWorks, Inventor, Fusion or Solid Edge. So we're first going to click on the cylinder tool, hold control and click on the main cylinder body. And if I change the selection tolerance down to 1, I believe that should select only the cylinder which will give me a, a cleaner fit and if you can see here the um, diameter is around about 134 millimeters so we're going to say 134 and override what the actual value was measured and I'm going to extract sorry extend the cylinder to go past the flanges so that we can cut that away in SolidWorks press OK Next we're going to do the internal cylinder, but you need to be careful to turn off the uh, diameter because it just will create another cylinder at the same size. And this time I'm going to choose the orientation and use the axis of cylinder 1 so that I get a perfectly concentric uh, cylinder to cylinder 1. And then I can override the diameter and set that to, for example, uh, 126.8 just an example. So you can either leave it as is or if you know the design intent you can uh, put that in and then we can accept that. I'm going to uncheck the diameter again but I'm going to keep the orientation of cylinder 1 and create the, the cylinders on the end flanges so we can just pull that back just past the cylinder and then pull that back so it just overextends a little bit. And the diameter of that is 292, so we'll make it 293. Just round it up. Accept. Uncheck the diameter. Click on the small flange. And then set that to 179. Accept. And uncheck the diameter again. And we're just going to add the cylinder in here. And if the selection tolerance isn't enough, you just need to increase that and we can just overextend that as well. Okay, and accept. So we're not going to do the other um, holes. Well, actually we could just to get an idea of their positioning. They should be just, um, you know, an array copy of the, the first cylinder we grabbed there. But, it, but, um, yeah, we can grab that for now. And then we just need to add a few planes. So if you click on the plane tool, I'm going to select normal to cylinder 1 so that it's a perfect 90 degree plane to the axis of cylinder 1. And we can accept that. Grab the other side, accept. Holding control, click on that flange, accept. The other side, control click, accept. OK. So we now should have enough information to um, create this part. Um, and so these cylinders will come through as actual solids and then we can use the planes to cut the solids. Just as an example. Um, an alternative method could be that you just create a cross section and then you sketch over the cross section and just revolve that cross section 360 degrees. So for example I click on the section tool I'm going to switch it to a radial cross section. My rotation axis would be uh, cylinder 1. My initial plane would be, for example, um, Y, Z. And then if you needed to, like if it's going through a dent, you could rotate that so it's not going through any, any dents or any holes and then you can accept. 
And if I just expand the details and under the navigation, you can see these are the entities we created. If I click on the cross section and then, and then press Control E, it will show only what's selected. So you can see it's found that cross section, and then we can revolve that around a central axis. So that's probably, I would say, the fastest way to do it. But um, let's have a look at the other method as well. And we can turn back on the visibility of everything we've created. And then all of the, this information can be live transferred over to the likes of SolidWorks or, or your CAD system. You can just export entities one at a time or use the live transfer. So we're going to use the live transfer. So you just click on your entities here, the main folder, then click transfer to SolidWorks and it will just send that all through to SolidWorks. So here is the data now imported into SOLIDWORKS and then we can start working on um, reverse engineering this part. So next we're going to look at using the planes to trim the flanges. So we're going to click on intersect and then we can select each plane just holding shift or clicking on each of the entities. So I selected the two planes and the cylinder. We're going to use create both and intersect and then we're just going to select which regions we want to keep only which is region 2. <coughs> we don't want to merge the result and we just want to hit uh, OK and just select that and that's just use those planes to cut. Repeat the process for the other flange so select only planes 3 and 4 and the flange cylinder intersect and we don't need, well we want to keep region 1 and we don't need the two other regions and then accept. So I want to remove the internal cylinder from the main body but I've made it a little bit short. I could edit it in here or I could go back into uh, peel.cad and re-export it. So just to show you that workflow I've deleted the cylinder. I can jump back into peel.cad. Um, if I select cylinder 2, I can't edit it, so I actually have to delete it here. Turn, by, turn back on my scan data. Cylinder tool, hold control and click on what I want to create my cylinder onto. Overextend it. Nice and large, so I can see that there. Orientation is using cylinder 1 axis and the diameter will say 127 except so it should still be called cylinder 2 sorry I'll just find where I put it I think I accidentally did not create it so we'll go control click again orientation cylinder one axis drag that out nice and large yep and we'll make the diameter 127 and just make sure you press OK before you cancel once you've done that let's remember the name so I'm going to right click and just transfer that to SOLIDWORKS and that cylinder is now showing in SOLIDWORKS. So I can then use my intersect tool again and I can select the internal cylinder and the outer cylinder, intersect both and I just want to keep only um, not that region, not that one, not that. So that's what I want to do and then I don't want to merge the results and accept <coughs> so now I want to um, do a few more intersections so we'll try intersect again and we want to go and intersect that body 
and this body here and that body there and we just need to figure out what to keep so we'll just keep turning, oh, I want to keep that want to keep that, don't need that don't want that um, I do want that don't want that Turn that around, just make sure you can see what you want to keep or not. Don't need that. And I'm missing one piece of the puzzle. So I want to keep that. the bit I want. And this time you could select merge results so that you keep it as one big body. And there we have it. We've got the shape that we're after. Okay, the next step is we're going to do a, a pattern array. So we need to go here and choose circular pattern. The direction will be the cylinder axis, cylinder 1 axis. We're going to use equal spacing so that it revolves 360 degrees. We want six copies and the bodies we want to use are, is this particular body here. And you can see it's pretty close but it's a little bit off so I would probably trust the circular pattern array um, if you're looking to redesign this part. So we can now accept that and then we only created those other two cylinders just to get a, an idea of you know the spacing so we can go and find those in the tree so we've got five it'll be six so I'm going to right click and hide that one and then we're going to right click and hide seven and then lastly we can do one last intersection and we can select the bodies we want to subtract from the main body here. So we want to keep that and we can take that away. Okay, I see. We'll take that and that, that and that, that and that, and one last one to do. Okay, and we can now accept that. That should be oh, sorry, we needed to take a few a few more regions. Here we go, and now we can accept. Okay, so we're now down. Uh, we've now finished the part, and we'll just hide this other geometry. Um, or we could just go and potentially show only. I'll just hide it manually. So hopefully, yeah, this is giving you an idea of how you can use uh, Peel.CAD um, with SolidWorks. And then, like I said, the other the other method would be with this cross section. You could potentially have traced over it. So I could have gone edit sketch, um, I could have selected that sketch and just convert it to construction geometry, traced over it with sketch tools and then revolve that around a 360 degree. So that could have been the other way or other method you could have used to reverse engineer this part. Okay, so that's the final result. And yeah, let us know if you have any other questions. Um, and feel free to contact us if you're interested in Peel 3 
and the PL3.CAD systems at info at procadsys.co.nz Just one other quick tip before we end um, you can actually go back into PL.CAD right click on your mesh and you can also transfer your mesh to SolidWorks so that can be useful for just verifying um, whether or not you've 3D modelled your part closely to the actual scan data um, so for example I'm just gonna drag a bit of colour over top of the STL file just so you can see that we've done a good job of recreating this part.